My guest today just may be Galesburg's fastest man ever, and he has the records and medals to prove it. A 2016 Galesburg High School graduate, Josh Eicher is one of the most talented athletes to ever compete in Illinois track and field. He won state titles in both the 100 and 200 meters, both his junior and senior year, and impressively, he did it in Class A and 2A his junior year and in Class 3A his senior year. He remains the fastest 200-meter runner in Illinois high school history with a time of 20.83 seconds in April of 2016, and back then that was the eighth best time in the nation. A 2021 inductee into the Galesburg Athletic Hall of Fame, Josh still owns five outdoor track records at GHS, the 100, 200, and 400, and is a member of the 4x100 and 4x200 relay teams. He went on to a successful but kind of an injury-riddled career at the University of Illinois where he ran track. He, uh, while he was there, he earned his bachelor's degree in sports management and a master's degree in strategic brand communication from the U of I. And he's currently an e-commerce analyst with the Libman Company based in Arcola, uh, just about you know f- uh, 45 minutes or so south of Champaign. Josh, welcome to Go Spring Focus. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad you can join us. So, I uh, talked to your former coach, Craig Hillier, a little bit just to kind of prep for this, and I asked him if it was safe safe to call you the fastest man ever in Galesburg, and he responded in uh, bold and three exclamation points, try one of the fastest ever in the state of Illinois. What does that mean to you being considered one of the fastest people to ever run high school uh, track in Illinois? I mean, that's, that's super cool. Um, really, this being recognized for the amount of effort and um, preparation not only that I put in, but my coaches, uh, my coach Hillier, coach Gross, coach Love Tech, um, and all my other teammates did. It really shows that um, it's all the lengths that we all went to um, really to get that second place in the team. Okay. I, this may sound like a silly question, but were you always fast? I, you know, could you beat anybody in a race as a, as a little kid? Um, I think I was always on the faster side, maybe not the fastest. Um, I don't really think that um, or I guess running, uh, really clicked for me until about freshman, sophomore year in high school. So even in, so, in junior high, I was still one of the faster kids, but I, I wouldn't say I was the fastest in junior high, maybe, but that was still up for debate. Yeah. So, I mean, did you, do you remember ever like, you know, who, who were some of the, who would you say were some faster uh, guys that you kind of grew up with that, you know, around your age? Yeah. Um, I always think, uh, I always remember back, uh, early days. So like Darius Sammons. Um, Ian Smith, really good at soccer. Joe Anderson, were always super fast. Um, then getting a little bit older um, through junior high, um, on the running side, um, so track, Eric Cole was always fast. Um, Eric Alpin was always fast, even though he was a, a year older than me. So I always had um, a good group of guys around us that were always super, super athletic and always super fast. Okay. So you grew up playing, I think, you know, pretty much all sports. You were basketball, baseball, football, soccer. Yeah. When did you know that track would be your sport? Again, not really till freshman or junior year in high school. Um, so growing up was real uh, football. Um, or I guess before that, um, so started with baseball, uh, soccer, did all that. Um, so like the little league, uh, t-ball, all the way up. Um, kind of went away from baseball a little bit when I got towards track. So that kind of replaced my spring sport there. And then with soccer and football, that conflicted in the fall. So went more towards football as I started getting older. Did you have a favorite sport, or was was it like anybody? Whatever season you're in, that was your favorite sport. Uh, I always loved football growing up. Uh, I didn't really even know this track or track wasn't really even on my radar until um, junior high and high school. I didn't honestly probably didn't even know it was a thing back, um, you know, elementary school, early um, junior high days. Did, were you one that did you go to all the, the uh, events at, at, at the high school, Galesburg High School? Yeah. Yeah. Growing up, we always went to the uh, football games, basketball games. So um, didn't really go to I don't think we ever went to a track meet um, growing up. So that was it's interesting. But what was your who were some of the guys that you remember? Uh, you know, some of the older guys that you remember, you know, well, I want to be like them. Um, I really, I think the first person I remember ever watching play in high school, um, was actually my uh, neighbor down the street. I believe it's Lucas Miller. Um, okay. he played, uh, I think football and then, um, another one played soccer. So I remember a few guys, uh, growing up there. And then, um, I actually got to run with, uh, Trevon Diggins. Um, so I was super cool getting, to watch him play uh, football and then run track for four years, and then my freshman year getting to to run with them too. Yeah, where would you say your love from for sports kind of developed? What you, your parents or you know where did that yeah. kind of come about? Yeah, definitely my parents. So my mom and dad um, always been super into 
um, sports. My mom's a 49ers fan. Uh, my dad's a Vikings fan, so I'll always have a little bit of tension there in the family. But um, we we love sports all the time. So growing up, we'd have football on the TV, baseball, uh, really anything that we could go to watch. We'd always go um, like family vacations. We'd always go see a minor league baseball game or something. So it was always something to do with sports. Yeah. It's just, so were there a lot of playing? And I mean, it, even if it wasn't organized, was there a lot of like neighborhood games and you know playing with kids around the where you lived? Yeah, yeah. So growing up, we'd always be, you know, outside uh, doing something, whether it was playing catch with the football or baseball or riding BMX around town or or something like that. Yeah. Okay. This is Jay Redford. I'm talking to former Galesburg track star and state champion Josh Iger. So, you know, talk a little about playing high school football because you're a receiver, correct? Yeah. Kind of a natural position for a speedster. You know, kind of talk about your football career and, and how that went and how you, d- you decided not to play later in your career. Yeah. Yeah. So that, um, I really enjoyed playing football. Uh, that was a, actually a really hard decision that I had to sit on for, for quite a while to think about. Um, but really it was that sophomore, junior year time frame. Um, I was getting a lot of interest for football and track and kind of had, um, a little bit more track than I did in football. Um, and then also with weighing, it's like, well, I could be a lot, my ceiling would be a lot higher in track than it would be in football and then weighing injuries and everything else. And then based on my Previous history of not always being able to stay healthy, felt that maybe track was the, the right decision. But hindsight's always twenty twenty, so I ended up getting hurt too. So I mean, yeah. Kind of talk about um, what 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 made you a good football player besides obviously your speed. What did, and what did you like about football? Yeah, um, I'll probably say my my ability to obviously the speed aspect of it, but the ability to run a route and separate myself from the defender. Um, not very often in high school um, would I have press coverage or anything so it was um really always a five or ten yard cushion um we were more of a running team than throwing team uh so didn't really get as many passes um as maybe some other teams would but that didn't really um I think impact my my career really at all I think it was was still a a good few seasons there yeah how about if you unfortunately we couldn't win that that state uh playoff game but yeah so was that back when coach Doherty was coach then yeah okay Kind of talk about, um, as far as the football, if you would have just concentrated on football, you know, what do you think your future would have been like? Um, I probably would have went uh, um, to college to play football. Um, there was a few of the bigger Power 5 schools that were interested. Never got anything official. It was always just the initial interest letter, so nothing um, to the level of track. But I think probably have gone to college to play football somewhere, and then um, I don't think I would have made it to the NFL or anything that was – wasn't ever really, really a goal, yeah. but yeah, you know, obviously, you know, natural speed isn't, is important for a sprinter, but, but kind of talk about how did you continue to get better as in track? Yeah. Um, it was really focusing on all the small details. Um, really in high school, coach Gross and coach Hillier, uh, really instilled that to do the big things, right. You have to do the small things, right. So I'm um, really drilling in uh form, practicing on all the small mechanics, uh, making sure all your angles are right. Um, everything like that. Um, and that, I mean, it leads over to the classroom too. So making sure everything's all the small stuff's taken care of. So you can, so you can do the big stuff. So I kind of, when I talked to coach Hillier, he said that, that you kind of made them up their game as coaches too. Did you see the coaching improve during the time that you were at, at, at GHS? Um, I don't, I don't know if I would say improved. I think it was always, always excellent. Um, I have nothing, nothing ever bad to say about, uh, yeah. Coaching, man. Um, yeah. I, I wasn't actually I saying it with was they just didn't, you know, that, they said they, they knew they had to step it up, you know, with your talent. So, yeah, I think that, um, I mean, maybe not just me, but I think our whole, um, team that year, uh, brought a whole new aspect to, uh, maybe Galesburg track and field that we haven't seen there in a while. Um, having, uh, a team that gets second place in state's a pretty big deal. So, um, it wasn't just me that did that. It was a whole, whole team that did that. So it wasn't, um, them improving coaching for me. It was them improving coaching for, for the whole team. Yeah. Kind of talk about what's the training like for a sprinter? Like, kind of take through the whole year. What go through each kind of season or month? What's it like to train to be a sprinter? Um, kind of give like a maybe a week break. That'll be a little bit easier. But mm-hmm. so like on Mondays, um, in college we'd have that'd be like our acceleration day. So it'd be a lot of ten, twenties, thirties, um, short acceleration stuff. A lot of powerful movements in the weight room. Uh, Tuesdays would be more of our tempo days. So our little uh, longer runs, two hundreds, three hundreds. Um, then Wednesdays would be a little mix of everything. So it'd be maybe some top speed stuff. Um, it's like 
60s, 90s, uh, full speed. Uh, maybe get some handoffs and stuff in there. Um, Thursdays, uh, a little bit lighter day, uh, walk through day, um, some general recovery stuff. Um, and then if we have the run that weekend, uh, Friday we travel um, or run, Saturday we run. Um, if we're not traveling, Friday would be probably another acceleration day. So we'll get a lot of block work in. And then Saturday would be another uh, like tempo day. So we'd run 200s, 300s. Kind of going back a little bit, how how did you get into track? And like, you know, when you when you'd never run track before, what obviously when you first start, probably you just you run as fast as you can. You know, yeah. kind of talk about the prog the progression of becoming an elite high school track uh, sprinter. Yeah, um, I guess really in junior high, just got into the track because it was something to do in the spring. Didn't really. Um, I wouldn't say I was interested in it either one way or the other. It was kind of indifferent. Say, hey, this is something to do with the spring. I'm going to do this to stay, stay busy for football. So um, really in junior high, it was more of being interested in it, keeping um, kids excited about running. I, I mean, now it's it's huge. You have 10, 12-year-olds that are super technical runners that are running 11 seconds in the, the hundred. It's, it's getting crazy now. But um, it, when I was in junior high, it wasn't it wasn't like that at all. It was just more so um we're out here to have fun it's not not super stressful and then moving up into high school um is a little bit more technical um obviously as we get um to the high school and then into college it's, um as the years progress you get a little bit more technical as you get a little bit faster there's a little bit more things that um we got to focus on so it's a little bit of a give and take there okay um at high school of course uh you had your most success and you basically were running the 100 and 200 individually kind of talk about the strategy in those two events how are they alike and how are they different? Um, I'll say they're probably both a, right about the same. It's really that full sprint all out. Um, really only difference you'd get maybe from the 100 to 200, at least the way I approached it and ran it. Um, I would still, and I guess in the 200, I would still get out like I would in the 100, but maybe from like 60 to 100 meters, I wouldn't keep pushing. I'd maybe try to maintain my speed a little bit. And then when I hit, um, that exchange gel going into the last hundred meters is really try to, to hammer it back down again. Okay. Was there, which did you prefer one or the other over the other? Um, no, not really. Uh, I actually really like the four by two the most. Okay. And then, uh, you know, as far as any good athlete, you know, you go into a competition expecting to win at what point in your track career did you think you were going to win every time? Um, I don't think that cross thought really crossed my mind ever. It was more so how can I run faster today than I did yesterday? Mm -hmm. uh, how can I run a faster time today? Like I already, a lot of my problems were in the starts. Um, so how can I focus today to improve my start to better my time? Cause I feel like that was really what um, hindered my progression, at least in the very beginning was uh, my ability to start. Who kind of helped you with that to improve at that? Uh, Gross did a lot of work um, in the blocks and then working with uh, some of my other teammates like Eric Oliphant was a really good starter. Uh, Cody Sibley is a really good starter. Ben Holloway is a really good starter. So getting in the blocks next to those guys and being able to practice with people that were better than me was, was a huge plus. Okay. You know, there have been a lot of great athletes at GHS, but there are some, including you, who are just dominant, that never lost. You know, uh, Gage Ship comes to mind, the wrestler recently, that yeah. they just don't just don't lose you know did that bring any added pressure to you um no i would say i put more pressure on myself than from the outside pressure um it was really um me wanting to better my own times and improve myself versus other people say hey you gotta run today or we're, we're rooting for you today so it was more pressure that i put on myself than than external kind of talk about the 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 sport of track you know you have individual, but then you have team, you know, is that something you liked and kind of talk about the dynamic of being on a track team? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an individual sport, but at the end of the day, it's still scored as a team. Uh, so that's also super cool uh, to be a part of knowing that you can individually play a role in how the team does. Uh, so it's a little bit different than maybe football or basketball, where you can have maybe one play where you have, you mess up uh, other, the other players can pick up for you, but in like track, say, uh, a sprinter you only got one shot um same with like the jumpers you have three shots for a high jump or three chances for a long jump and it's really on you to um either hit the board or hit your marks and it's um on yourself but it's also other teams uh relying on you so like the relays you have uh three other runners that are relying on you to to do what you need to do and either get the handoff receive the handoff or 
um, get positioned in maybe a four by four or something like that. Would would you say you um, improved every year in high school, or was there one year that you really took a big leap to to the next next level? Um, I'd say probably my biggest improvement would be between freshman and sophomore year. Um, and then, I mean, sophomore year, my 200 only dropped a little bit after that. Um, my 100 dropped a little bit too. Um, but I think really the biggest improvement was technically speaking from freshman to sophomore year, um, just being able to actually hit the right, um, angles in my acceleration, being able to run, um, up tall consistently and just being more consistent with my running form instead of kind of all over the place. You know, a lot of sports, you know, they say the players are made in the off season. Is track the same kind of thing, or is it like pretty much things are going on during track season? Um, I'd say track's really an all year round thing. I mean, there's not really one week that um, you say maybe a month period or something. I uh, was like, hey, let's really hammer it this week or this month. Um, I mean, you get up to the um, the college level or even the summer meet stuff. You're running from uh, training from August to June, July every year, so you really only have a month and a half or so off. Um, but I mean, if you really wanted to get a lot of your base work done that the fall is really the time to do that. Um, early fall. So August, September, October is when you really, uh, hammer in the weight room and hammer on the, the track and try to get a lot of the, the base work done. And then when you get closer to season, um, you back the weight down a little bit, back the intensity of the training down a little bit to keep, um, your legs fresh a little bit longer. Just like, you know, any sport that's played in the spring, the weather is so, you know, it can be yeah. 30 degrees sometime and 80 degrees. Now, how did that impact you as a track athlete, the weather? Yeah, so that's actually a weird thing. I played or ran in more weather variation in track than I ever played in football. So, I mean, I've ran in the snow, ran the sleet, ran in 115 degrees, ran the the wind, so all of it. So it's a little bit different, but it really it's the same for everybody. If I had to choose one that I not would never want to run in again, it would probably be the rain. But yeah. And I think what when you when you set the uh, two hundred record was that kind of that was on a, in April right on kind of was that kind of a cold cold day yeah. that you set that yeah so I think it was I don't know maybe mid sixties low sixties up in and downer to Grove then um, not super windy but it was a little chilly yeah but okay. as for running I guess I would prefer a little hotter than cold that's a little cold for for me but yeah. Good. Take me through your state championships, your junior and senior years, you know, especially, I guess, once you get to the, you know, the sectional on, uh, what were your, you know, how did you prepare to win a state championship? Um, really? So freshman year was kind of the beginning of that. Um, got a taste of that in the 200, I uh, was the only freshman to qualify that year. Um, did do very great, but it was still a huge learning experience. Just going, I want to say going through the motions isn't the right word, but going through the experience of uh, the state track and field meet uh, was huge going into sophomore year, um, qualifying in four events there. So the 100, 200, and then both relays. Um, so really what I took from freshman year going into sophomore year was just the amount of rounds that you have to run through. So for conference, there's uh, prelims and finals, sectionals, prelims and finals in state, there's prelims and finals. So you're running a lot more in the weekend than you normally do. So it's being able to handle um, eight races in two days versus maybe four races in a day is the big thing at a much higher intensity. And then talk about when you get to state, um, are you favored both years to win the hundred and 200? I think I was favored in both my junior year. I don't know if I was favored in the 100, my senior year. I think I came in maybe ranked two or three in the 100, my senior year. I, I want to say Darius Rogers and, Maybe Declan were ranked higher than me, I think, but I think I was definitely top top three for for both years. And let's talk about your let's talk about your junior year first uh, in the hundred and two hundred. Uh, how did those two races go at state for you? Yeah, uh, so going into that Saturday, um, I was actually fair, a lot more nervous than I probably should have been. Uh, um, so sophomore year, um, going into the day of finals, I that morning wake up on Saturday, I was super tired from running four races the the day before, so. Fast forward a little bit to junior year, um, thinking as how can I recover after Friday night to be ready for Saturday morning. So it was um, getting an ice bath, everything that I didn't do the year before to prepare myself for for Saturday morning, um, and then being able to make sure you get a good warm up and everything, um, and having my teammates there was a, a huge plus to also warm up and, and go through all that too. 
And then what do you, what do you, uh, is the hundred before the 200? Yeah. Yeah. So when you win your first day championship, what's your, what's your feeling like then? Um, actually it was, it was very short lived. So we, we ran the four by one, um, then went back for the hundred. Um, so one, one, the hundred, uh, was a state champion in that, and then had to go immediately back for end of the 10 for the four by two. So, um, maybe got five minutes with, um, the, the guys there and then a picture on the podium and then had to go, go right back in the tent for round two. Okay. And then how about heading into your senior year? You know, you're the double state champion. And then when did you know that, you, that, uh, Galesburg would be moving up to three A? Um, I don't think we found that out till maybe midway or later to the season. Um, I don't know exactly what went into counting that. Um, so that's maybe completely wrong. Uh, we have to fact check me on this one, but I okay. think, um, they counted all of our GABC students that came in, um, as part of the enrollment. So I think that's why we got moved up to three, a, but I could be making that up. So don't <laughs> you might have to check me on that one, but yeah. So then like, what did the, did that put anything in your mind that you're going to be stepping up? I mean, is that quite a, what's the, what's the difference in, you know, skill level between two and three, a, do you think? Um, so I would say at the very top, so the top of one, a, the top of two, a and top of three a are all very similar. Um, but it's just the depth of the field. So maybe three through 10 are not as fast and maybe one a, as it would be in three a. So it's a lot, the fields are a lot deeper, um, in two a and three a than they would be in maybe one a. Yeah. So once you wrap up, uh, your senior year and you're, you're a four time individual state champion, what's, how do you, how do you reflect on that? Um, I think we got back and then had like a celebration party or something. Um, I think it was at Soli's actually. And then, um, a little shortly after that, went over to uh, another friend's grad party. So, really spent uh, my celebration celebrating others. So it was it was a good time. Yeah, where, where are those medals at today? Uh, I have my Big Ten medal here somewhere downstairs, um, and then my parents have all the the high school ones and stuff from uh, somewhere at the house, I think. But <laughs> okay, kind of talk about the the recruiting process for you. How many offers did you receive? What kind of schools you know were were interested and offered maybe, and then how did you end up at Illinois? Yeah, um, so I kind of going back, yeah, so I got football and track interest. I didn't ever get anything concrete for football. Um, it was never official offers. It was always the um, intro, like come visit our junior day or our senior day, um, come for a visit. But for track, I was actually getting coaches coming to the high school, uh, which is actually super interesting because I didn't, when, at least my first three years in high school, I didn't experience any of that or having – college coaches come into the school to talk to athletes. So that was super cool. Um, and then what really, uh, I don't know, probably say probably 90% of the big 10 schools, uh, reached out a fair amount of East coast and West coast schools, maybe 15 or so that I probably had the chance of actually going to, and then only took visits to TCU and Illinois. Okay. And how, how did Illinois end up being the winner? Uh, what really got me was the guys that I watched running in high school were already there at Illinois. I was like, Hey, I've watched Cole Henderson run for three years. I watched Ben Barnes jump for two years. Like I want to go where all the other Illinois state champions have been. So is that, yeah, that team you see in that is way? That, uh, is that a decision you're glad you made to go to Illinois? Yeah, definitely. Okay. How about the Olympics? You know, people assume because you're so, so talented and you know you won in high school and then you know you had some amazing times that ranked nationally were the were the olympics ever on the radar for you was that a realistic goal um they were on the radar um realistic i don't know if i'd put it that far um just because of just the amount of athletes and the time it takes to be able to get to that level um especially for sprints you really have to be consistently under 10 seconds in the 100 consistently under 20 seconds in the 200. Um, and then a lot of the guys that I was running against in high school um, ran some of the summer meets and stuff with. A lot of them didn't make it that far. Um, and then other guys um, that weren't um, state champions in high school, um, like Courtney Lindsay from Rocky, he actually just qualified for the 4x1 for the Olympic team. So he's have a Illinois own on the Olympic uh, track team this year. So that's that's yeah. super cool. That is cool. Kind of talk about how'd your career go at Illinois? Um. I enjoyed it. I don't think I would change anything, maybe not get hurt, but uh, <laughs> not um, really, really enjoyed it. Um, felt that um, did the best I could with, with what I had. I mean, obviously would, if I could prevent getting hurt, I would do that, but still wouldn't change any of it for, for anything. 
What what are some of the injuries that kind of brought you down? Uh, so really the big one was the uh, herniated L4 and then degenerated L5, or sorry, reverse that. So the herniated L5 and degenerated L4 in my lower back. Um, so that really put me out for the better part of a year and a half or two years and that really couldn't get back to the same intensity level after that. Had you had that injury before or what kind of brought that on, do you think? No, so that was it was one of the weird ones. So it was a lot of, uh, I guess this just said overuse over time. Um, so they just, I guess the joints or the discs in my lower back um, just over time started um, giving out and it got to a point uh, one weekend sitting on a, a nine hour bus ride to Nebraska that my back said, this is enough. So, or sorry, Iowa State, but. What was the uh, competition like uh, going from high school to, you know, Big Ten? Um, so I might have had a, a weird first introduction to college. So I actually won my first ever college meet um, and PR indoors. So that was probably a a, a bad start for me, actually. Um, and set my expectations maybe a little too high. Um, but it was definitely a huge change going from being the top in the class to now being, oh, well, everyone here is now a state champion. Everyone here is fast. Um, so it's really the whole, you know, from high school to college, it's 1% make it to the next level. And then from college, it's 1% of that make it to the next level. And you can really, really see that, especially in, in track and field coming from uh, being a four-time state champion in high school. Then you get to college and like, oh, well, I'm no longer the fastest anymore. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I talk about uh, how do you balance school and, you know, academics and sports, at, you know, at that level? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, obviously you have to be in class. If you don't get your schoolwork done, you can't uh, perform. You can't run track. You can't play football. You can't really do anything else. So that's first and foremost. Um, what was super nice for us is all the external resources they had available to us. Um, so freshman year, they had mandatory study hall hours, um, which were annoying. But at, looking back, it was a huge thing. Uh, they required you to be in the academic center around all the tutors, around all of your counselors and everything, getting your homework done. Um, freshman year that after that, um, if you have a certain GPA, you can kind of wean down on your um, study hall hours, um, but you're still required to be in there. Um, again, just to make sure you're getting all of your stool work done. So, I mean, if you're not, if you're family class, it's your fault. It's not <laughs> all your resources yeah. there. You have to take advantage of it. Yeah. What, what do you miss about track and what don't you miss? Um, I don't miss practicing. <laughs> I, I don't miss feeling... Um, how you feel after 400 meters um, or after uh, repeat 300s. I don't miss that. Um, but I do miss just all the conversations and um, experience you got with all your teammates at practice, going through those hard workouts together, um, suffering together, um, sitting on those long bus rides, um, sitting in track meets. That's the the part that you miss. Not so much the the actual practicing, but all the, the conversations and interactions while you're doing that. Yeah. So Coach Hill, you raved about how coachable you were. You know, he you were always – listening and said that even after, you know, you continue to be, you know, a very humble person, one of the most humble person he knows, and you take time for everybody. Where does that kind of come from? Do you think? Um, probably my parents. Uh, I mean, my dad's, uh, to talk to anybody, he can have 30 seconds to be somewhere, but he'd spend that 30 seconds talking to you for, if you need it. So, I mean that, and then my grandma talks to everybody. So I think it's, um, definitely from the family. Okay. Let's, let's finish with a little rapid fire round. I'm going to say something. You kind of give me your first thought. So how about favorite track that you ever ran on? Uh, definitely in Oregon. Okay. How about it was, before they, it was before they renovated though. So I haven't got the, I haven't got to run the new one yet, but I bet that one's even, even cooler. Okay. How about least favorite track to ever run on? Least favorite track. Um, how much difference does the track make? I guess it depends. So indoors and outdoors, they can make a huge difference. So indoors, um, a flat 200 um, versus a bank 200 is a huge difference. And then even a indoor 300 track is a huge difference. Um, so I'd probably say any indoor flat 200 track that you have to race on is not, would be my least favorite. Yeah. How about, how about through uh, your high school, any any tracks that you said, oh, I don't really want to go. I mean, that's not really some place that you really like to run. Uh, ISU. I did not really? like running it you nope their uh indoor 200 was super tight um the stands over had an overhang over the starting line um mm -hmm. and uh, um the 60 lines you couldn't really see um all the races on that side or really that whole half of the track when events were going but um those was just super tight and when i was running there they didn't have it um super updated yet um so it was still 
a little worn down, but that would probably be my my least favorite just with the the layout of the track and the overhang and watching everything and yeah. the the lack of warm up areas. But yeah. What's the best piece of advice that you would give a high school athlete? Um focus on the small things. Don't take um every day for granted to be able to do the big things, you have to do the small things right when no one's looking. So are you getting your homework done? Are you doing the right things? Are you eating right? Are you staying up till midnight playing video games, eating candy? Um, if what you want, if you want to run track, that's your thing. If you want to be good in football, baseball, swimming, whatever it is, you have to put all of your effort in that. And that's really it. Yeah, that's that's a good answer. No, so, is, are, are, there, <laughs> are there any uh, misconceptions about track athletes? Um, I don't know. <laughs> just that's a tough one yeah i just kind of threw that out there maybe that track athletes that try out track athletes are athletes that didn't make it in other sports um mm -hmm. i would you that um track athletes are just as good if not could have done um just as well in other sports too yeah that, that's a good point how about sports idol or idols growing up uh really like usain bolt <laughs> um just being a taller sprinter uh me being tall really like bolt um, really liked his off of Powell, how he ran. Um, so looked up to the, those for track and then for football, um, was really, I mean, way before my time, but Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, um, mm. liked watching like old footage of those, those guys played. Okay. How about most influential, influential coach or coaches in your career? Uh, I would probably say the track coaches. So probably all of them. I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if I could pick, pick one or the other. They all have, have different aspects that were. Um, unique and helped me out in different ways. Yeah. How about most influential teachers that you've had? Uh, teachers, classroom teachers? Yeah, probably the same. Probably Coach Hillier, uh, um, Coach Gross, and that. Um, one of my shop teachers, actually an auto shop, um, Mr. Mathis, he was a, a huge uh, help in that, not only with the auto side or the auto shop stuff, but just general life stuff. Um, could ask really life questions and he'd be um, always wanting to help answer those questions. Okay. Who would be on your Mount Rushmore of greatest track athletes? Are you saying Bolt, obviously Michael Johnson, um, probably Flo Joe would be up there. Um, and probably you could leave Jesse Owens off either. I don't think yeah, there'd be yeah. there, there. I don't know if you could only leave it limited to four, but Carl that was, that, yeah, that would be a, you could argue that list all day, but yeah. How about, this is a, this is kind of a tough question. I don't know if it's rapid fire, but other than family, you get to invite four people to dinner, living or dead. Who would be at the table with you? Mm. You said other, there can't be family. Yeah. Just, I mean, yeah, just like, you know, historical figures or athletes, you know, who, who would be four people you'd want to invite living or dead? Uh, probably Pete Theory. Uh, be able to talk to him again. That would be that'd be huge. Um, maybe Usain Bolt just to pick his brain, see all the things he's been through, and maybe see if there's any unique things that he's seen in in track or anything like that that um I could help with. Any when people ask me for advice or what I think about something, be able to um give that uh, to them as well. Um. That's a hard one too. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I stumped the last one. So but, least you got through two of them. So I'll have to maybe revisit asking that question. So how about when you're not working, you like to, what do you like to do in your off time? Um, really, uh, I don't know. Walk the dogs outside. <laughs> um, really just like to be outside, um, whether it's even just sitting there doing nothing. It's, um, just nice to sit out, sit outside. Um, like watching TV sometimes, watching movies, um, TV shows, uh, so any other office fans out there, uh, the new series starting this fall, looking forward to that. Okay. <laughs> um, play video games sometimes and all my friends are on there. Um, so that's actually a, another one too. So it's still going to be in contact with a lot of my old teammates that I don't see anymore. Um, so maybe once or twice a week, we all get to get on, um, and play video games together. So that's super cool getting to talk to those guys still and, um, see how their life's going. Okay. Just a couple more here. What, how about favorite meal? What's your, what's your ideal meal? Uh, probably eggs and bacon. Okay. 
breakfast guy. I guess you can have that any time of the day. Though. Yeah, yeah, anytime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, how about must place visit? It's you know must place must visit places when you're back in Galesburg. Um, Cher- Cherry Street, Coney Island. Um, probably made right. Those are kind of the standard ones. Oh, yeah. A lot of people go to those when you're when they come yeah. back. So Coney Island's my go-to. <laughs> okay. Yep. I was just there for lunch today. So yeah, <laughs> good spot. So, how about what do you want your legacy to be at Galesburg? Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that one. A little uh, early for that, I guess, huh? Yeah. Uh, maybe just someone that would always go the extra mile to do the thing or the right thing. Um, whether it was either in the classroom or, um, in track football, um, always gave a hundred percent effort. Didn't, um, cheat himself or anyone else out of, um, what they were, were getting. Yeah. That, that's a good one. And finally, uh, do you think your records at Galesburg High School will ever be broken? I hope so. <laughs> so you're uh, not one of those ones that you're like, you're one. I hope so, them. yeah. Yeah. I mean, their records are meant to be broken, right? So. <laughs> Wait, what, what do you think is going to be the toughest one to break? Uh, I think the 4x1 and 4x2 will probably be the hardest because you have to get four athletes that are uh, very fast to get to get to those two. But the 100 and 200 and the 400 can get um taken down pretty easily compare or comparatively, I guess. But, um, I think the four by one and four by two will be a whole, we'll take four guys to get that one down, but let's give a little credit to those guys. So who were on those teams with you on those relay teams? Yeah. Eric Cole, uh, Eric Oliphant and Ben Holloway. Okay. So those and are pretty Evan special. Taylor was on our four by one, uh, that whole year leading up. Um, unfortunately he got hurt leading up to sectionals, I believe. So he missed out to run on, on state, but he was definitely a part of that. Those relay teams too. Okay. And that's former Galesburg track star Josh Eicher. Josh, you're uh, you're one of the best ever that's uh, competed at Galesburg, and you you know you're doing great things now. So, uh, thanks for joining me today on Galesburg in Focus. Yeah, thanks for having me.